Hello everyone, this is Micah History. Welcome to part 5 of What If Rome Never Fell. So, you should watch the previous four episodes in order to understand the context, because otherwise you won't really know what is going on here. Have you done that? Great. Alright, let's get to this. So, the year is 1415, a quite pivotal year. We left off with John Huss being burned at the stake. But, if the Romans thought that this would quell their troubles, they were terribly wrong. In 1415, guess who's back? That's right, England. Because England begins an invasion of northern Gaul that will not end anytime soon. But, in more light-hearted news, in 1418, the Age of Discovery officially begins under the sponsorship of Henry the Navigator in Portugal, uh, who helps discover Madeira. And, you know, perhaps this Age of Discovery thing might become a little important later. Wink, wink. Now, in 1419, the Hussite Wars break out. Distracted by England, the Romans can't really deal with the Hussites, who rebel against their authority for having murdered their leader, John Huss. Now, just as things couldn't be getting any worse, in 1421, Lutetia, which, remember, was now the new Roman capital, is taken, and so the capital was moved back to Rome for the first time after a thousand years. This is a very significant deal. Now, in 1425, as the shift happens back towards Italy, in Florence, the Church of St. Lawrence, huh, that rhymes, is created by Philippus Brunelleschi, the first modern engineer, and this becomes the first example of Renaissance architecture. Meanwhile, Masaccio and Masolino begin the first Renaissance art while painting the Brancacci Chapel, changing Roman art from two to three-dimensional for the first time. And this marks a shift back to the more classical artistic values. But in 1429, just as the English seem unstoppable, a, an unknown Roman warrior emerges, one who is a teenage peasant girl known as Joan of Arc, who despite having no military experience and just being 17 years old, commands a Roman army and begins pushing the English back, giving them the first major setback in 14 years. But this does not last very long, because two years later, she is burnt at the stake and martyred. However, her efforts were not in vain, because between 1433 and 1436, English territory in Gaul is reduced to just Normandy, roughly. In 1434, more good news happens when the Hussite Wars end, the Ultracus siding with the Romans against the radical Hussites. Meanwhile, Portuguese captain Gilles Aeneas, Aeneas sorry, passes Cape Bojador, marking another landmark in the Age of Exploration. And one follows soon after in 1445, as Cape Verde Peninsula is explored by Portugal. Now, in more cultural news, in 1450, the first treatise on architecture on the subject of building is published by Leon Baptista Alberti, and a shift towards more classical architecture begins. And so, the Romans really become more culturally Roman, once again. In 1453, a major tragedy strikes. Constantinople is lost to Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II, with the Roman Emperor Constantine the Seventh dying there in defense of his city. Now the Habsburgs under Frederick the Second take over and conclude the war in Gaul successfully, legitimizing themselves. Now, what is important to know about them is they are also a fully Roman dynasty, and they replace the Greek Palaiologos dynasty that had died off with Constantine the Seventh. They begin emphasizing Roman identity and really sponsor the Renaissance, helping it reach its real peak, re-emphasizing the art, the architecture, and the culture of the older Roman Empire, of the olden, older Roman Empire in its heyday. Now, the sack of Constantinople also results in the last Romans there moving to the empire and bringing their texts and knowledge with them. And this begins the new Roman Golden Age, one which will see Rome reach unprecedented heights. In 1469, Henry IV of Castile's half-sister Isabella marries Ferdinand, son of John II of Aragon, against Henry's wishes, which causes him to disinherit her. 
Six years later, the War of Castilian Succession breaks out after the death of Henry IV between Isabella and Ferdinand and Henry's supposed daughter, Joana la Beltraneja, who is married to Afonso V of Portugal. In 1479, the war ends in Isabella and Ferdinand's favor. Three years later, the Granada War begins, in which Castile decides to finally conquer Granada and end the last Muslim presence in the Iberian Peninsula. Meanwhile, more good news happens, as in 1488, Bartholomeus Dias reaches the Cape of Good Hope, which is the southernmost point in Africa. Finally, in 1492, the Granada War ends, with the Muslims at last being expelled from Western Europe. And this marks the beginning of a great change in European history. Because that very first year, that very same year, as you all know, Christopher Columbus begins his first voyage, which results in the exploration of the Caribbean. Between 1495 and 1498, Leonardus Vincius, the quintessential Renaissance man, paints The Last Supper, which becomes the outstanding example of religious painting. And this really begins the High Renaissance, when Roman art and architecture reaches new peaks it hadn't seen since the glory days of classical Rome. Meanwhile, in 1497, a Roman explorer, John Cabot, explores Newfoundland for England. In 1498, India is reached by Vasco da Gama, while Michelangelo completes his Pietà, making him the greatest Roman sculptor. Also that year, Columbus begins his third voyage, during which he explores South America. And it's important to notice, to remember, that Columbus was also Roman. In 1499, Ioannis Fernandes Labrador explores Labrador in Greenland, which, of course, is named after him. And in 1500, Vincentius Yanis Pinzon and Petrus Alvarez Cabral become the first to explore Brazil. And so we now arrive at the 16th century, a new age for the Roman Empire, which will see it transform even more than it already has. In 1502, the Guelders Wars break out between Rome and Guelders. In 1506, work begins on St. Peter's, the largest and greatest church created ever, and the quintessential example of Renaissance architecture. It will serve as an example of the power of the Roman Empire and of the Roman Catholic Church, and it is intended to be a symbol of Roman might and glory for the entire world. It is designed by great Roman architects Donatus Bramante and Michelangelo. Meanwhile, the following year, a new name is used for the new world at last, which is called America, after an, another Roman, Americus Vespucius. In 1512, Antonius de Abreu reaches the Spice Islands, and so at last the Europeans have access to the spices that had kicked off the Age of Discovery in the first place. In 1513, Vasco Nunez de Balboa reaches the Pacific and takes over Panama, and Ioannis Ponce de Leon explores Florida, while Georges Alvarez reaches China. In 1516, through marriage, the Roman Habsburgs inherit Castile and Aragon in a personal union, making Charles IV the most powerful Roman emperor ever. What will happen next? Well, you gotta stay tuned to find out. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to share. And next time, we will see how the Roman Empire will deal with the massive turbulence of the 16th century.